Alrighty, so I'm going to show you guys how I paint eyes. So I've got my colors over here. Um, I do prefer metallics because it gives a nice little shine to the eyes. Um, but you can also use whatever kind of paint you got. I usually use, um, I think it's, I prefer Americana and Folk Art. I don't really love Apple Barrel. It's kind of a, just a really sad paint. Really uh, thin. So, I always start out by drawing around my eyes. So I have kind of a template as to how big they're going to be. These ones are giant eyes. I think they're at least 20 millimeters, if not bigger. But I wanted to do something large. You guys can see what I'm doing. So I traced it. I'm going to write cat eyes so we know what they are. And then I'm going to trace out a pupil. So with my kitties, I usually like a fairly large pupil. It makes them look more friendly as opposed to a smaller pupil to a thinner slit, I should say. And then before you set in stone that that's what you want, check under your eye because that's a giant pupil. <laughs> so I'm going to make it look much smaller. That's not terrible for my first go. So I always leave my eyes right next to me so I can check as I go. Just make sure your paint's dry before you stick it on top. Otherwise you're going to be stuck. So I should mention that these eyes will be partially covered because in my cat head, let's see. Because in my cat head, you can tell that the eyelid goes over it. So we're not going to be able to see the full eye when we're done. So that's why you want your pupil to be smaller unless you want it to overlap. So that's actually a pretty decent size. I don't hate that one. Okay, so now I'm going to try and mirror it on the other side. Mirror this size at least. It's okay if it's a little bit off center because you can move your eye around a little bit when you ad adhere it to your paper. So I'm using cardstock because I prefer a little bit thicker when I'm adding paint. I don't want it to just go straight through like a regular printer paper. So I do like the little bit added, added weight of the cardstock. Okay, let's check that. So, not too shabby. This one's still a little bit fatter than the other one. And you can tweak this once you start painting too, but I like to get it fairly set before I start so I know how my eyes are going to look. Okay, so now we're going to start with the base color. So I'm painting green eyes. So I prefer to do, so this is my main color. This is the color I want it to be close to, this minty, really pretty color. Then I've got a darker green and I've got a lighter slash accent color, which is this yellow. I've got the black for my pupils. I've got a shadow color and I've got a highlight. I may not end up using this gold, but I'm thinking I might. I'm not sure, I'll have to see if I wanna do the yellow or gold. I don't think I'll do both. But, so I usually start with my main color, and it's okay if you go outside the lines, it's not a big deal. It's just as long as you can see it, so you know where your shadow line should start. Sorry, I am going to cover this up when I get paint. I was hoping to move my paint so it wouldn't be in the way of you guys, but my hands are very much set with it being right there, so <laughs> I'm making do. I love this mint color. I'm a big fan of pastels. So now we got our base color.
Okay, so the base color doesn't need to be watered down, but as I go along, I am going to water the colors I use. So I want this teal a little bit watered down. So I just did a paintbrush that was kind of full of water, and I'm just mixing it in to get it a little bit lighter. These metallic colors don't take much water to thin out really nice. And then I'm just going to apply a shadow around the whole eye. So her eyes aren't the same color all the way through, obviously. <laughs> so I do use my finger quite a bit to blot. I don't know why, but I just started once and it's just kind of hard to stop. And we'll do multiple layers, so it's okay if your layers are coming up. You want it to be really subtle transitions because you're going to be able to see that under your glass. And it's going to be really blatant. You're going to be able to see those harsh lines. And from here on, it's mainly just a gameplay of how dark or light you want your eyes. So I'll do the dark, and then I'll go back through and usually add more light as I go along, just to see if it added, if it made it too dark. I'm gonna do my shadow while I'm here too. So I'm gonna do this brown. It's a nice kind of chocolate brown. And I usually only shadow the top and the very edge because that's where your eye is usually shadowed the most. It's shaded by your eyelid. And then just a very thin line around the outside because that's how Kitty's eyes are. They're dark at the very edge. And I always save the pupil for last, too. Because you'll mess it up as you go along if you do it first. I do use a lot of colors in the eyes and I love that. It just adds a lot more realism to it. Okay, so now I've gotta decide if I wanna do my yellow or gold. So I was noticing, so I want it to match her gem, which is what I'm going for. I think I do wanna use the yellow. I might just add some couple streaks of gold. I usually have this set out beforehand and I like to paint my own eyes so that way it'll match the fur because the paint I use for the eyes is usually the same paint I will use for the fur. And so they'll match exactly and look like they're cohesive and not supposed to be on separate pieces. Okay, so I'm just gonna come in here and add this nice little line of yellow. Just kind of brighten up the eyes. I think I'm gonna go all the way out, I kinda like that. Okay, it's so now I'm gonna decide what I wanna add. So because I'm doing such thin layers, it usually dries pretty quickly. But you can check it, and this is already dry. There's nothing on there. So I'm going to check it and see how it's coming along. See how I like it. If my shadow's too strong or not strong enough. I'm actually going to stand up because my phone's in the way. So I'm liking that pretty good. I do want to add a little bit more mint to the center. 
because I wanted my center, you want your center to be your main color, and my shadow on the edges doesn't go quite in far enough, so I'll fix that too. Okay, so I'm going to add some more mint, and I'm going to water this down because once you're past the first layer, you want to water it down so they'll all just kind of melt together and look like they're meant to be that way. So because these eyes are so large, you could probably add lines to them too. I don't usually do it with my small eyes because they'll look really strong under the domes. And these are just um, glass cabochons. These are half, half ball or high dome, depending on what you want. Um, I've used the high dome or the regular, it's just personal preference as to which one you like better. Um, the high dome has a really magnifying quality, so it'll show every imperfection in your eye, so you'll want to make it like as perfect as you can. But it also gives it a really nice depth. I'm going to add a little bit more of that teal too, because I love how that looks. So from here on out, you're really just layering until you find what you want. So your darker colors, you always want to stick to the outsides and the top. The only thing in the center is you want to be a really light color. You can mix it up and only put color on certain parts. Whatever you want to do, these are your eyes. Now I'm going to go back and add my shadow. I'm going to bring it a little bit farther in than I did last time. And I'm just feathering that shadowed edge and making sure I'm not getting shadows on the inside. <laughs> of course I did. Be too easy. something right here. I don't know what that is. I'm just going to scratch it off. Okay. Okay. So you don't have to wait till the very end to add your pupil. I am going to check these out and see if these go all the way in now. So that's pretty nice where it's at. Mainly just all you're looking for right now is lights in the center, darks on the outside, and the little bit of shadowing on the top. Give it kind of a hooded eye. Okay, now I am going to add the pupil, but I do want to use my smaller brush because I want to get that fine line. And I'm using a metallic black. If you get any metallic, get this black. It's the best. It adds just a really nice depth to your eye. So now I'm just going to trace that line. I'm sorry, my hand keeps getting in the way. I will reteach myself to use it the other way. And pupils don't have to be perfect. I mean, they're different for everybody. Yeah, 
I also work sideways, I'm kind of a weirdo, but do it how you do it. <laughs> And if you're trying to get a fine point, always pull towards your hand. It's way easier to get a finer point that way. So this side's a touch chubbier than the other one. So I'm gonna fatten out the other side towards the center. So now I'm going to use my thin paintbrush probably from here on out. This is a nail art brush if anybody's interested. I have no idea where I got it from, probably Amazon forever ago. Um, it used to have tiny rosebuds on it, they have since worn off. <laughs> but um, I really prefer fine paintbrushes, they make this job so much easier. Okay, now I'm going to run this brown along the very outside edge of my eye just kind of tapers it into the rest of the eye makes it look less of a stark line you don't have to add this but I really like it if you like that really stark line just leave it okay and now I'm gonna do a highlight and I'm trying to decide if I, I think I'm gonna do it in mint I want that to be my main color. So you want to go right on the outside of the pupil and use the mint. You don't have to follow the whole pupil. Just get what you like. You kind of feather the edge if you want. You can also use your paintbrushes for feathering. It's really just whatever works for you. I like to add that, that highlight. Can you tell the difference between the two eyes? Let's see if I can get it closer. So I like to add that highlight because it really just stands the pupil out on the rest of the eye. Sorry if you can hear my husband in the background. He came home from school early today. He's not feeling so great. Well, not early, but earlier than I expected. <laughs> Otherwise I would have done this with you on a different day. Okay. So now I'm just going in and fixing what I messed up on the pupil. Which is so not the first time I've done this. <laughs> Messed it up. <laughs> okay. Since this is the shaded top part, I am still going to layer a little bit just because I want it to look the same as the surrounding eye. So I started with my base. I'm going to add some of this teal. I'm going to go back and do light there too. I'm going to add some of the brown. help kind of bandage that and you really can't go wrong with eyes I mean just keep working with it and you'll get it to where you want and the key is to just do really light layers so I'm just doing really thin layers of watered down paint So when I fix that, I may actually add some freckles because they're kind of fun in eyes, and these are really giant eyes. Okay, let's check and see how they're coming. Not too shabby. Okay. Oh. Smeared that again. Sheesh. 
just messing that up today. Like I say, you can add lines, you can do whatever you want. These are your eyes, so have fun with them. I will say the key things to think about when you're doing it is I really like the shading on the top. It really makes the eye feel like it's dimensional. So I like this shading up here. I always do a line around the edge. Um, if I'm doing like a human eye, I won't bring it in as far as I did with this one. But because cat's eyes are darker around the edges, that's why I did it that way. <clears throat> um, I usually do the shading around the pupil, but that's just personal preference. And then always do the highlight around the pupil. I will say that that's one of the steps I wouldn't skip. I really love adding the highlight around the pupil. It adds so much. And this is usually way more paint than I would ever put on my palette at one time, but I wasn't sure how much I'd need with these giant eyes. I haven't had a chance to use them yet. So I wasn't sure what to expect. Plus I wanted you guys to be able to see the colors, so. There's that. Okay, um, so my last step is I really like to add glitter. So this is a great one. The It's called Extreme Glitter by Folk Art. I really like this one. Um, you can use whatever you want though. I've actually used like fine glitter and you just put on a thin layer of your sealant and then just put the glitter on top. And that works really fun too. I would say though, if you do that, to just make, sh make sure you're really careful where you put your sealant because otherwise the glitter will end up everywhere. Um, and I don't put glitter in the pupil because then it'll just look really funky. <laughs> but I do put the glitter out here, definitely on the highlighted parts. So this really light color right here. We can take it all the way to the edge, whatever you want to do. But I do not recommend putting it on the pupil because it will start, it will stick out like a sore thumb. But I really like the glitter. It adds just a little bit of, a little bit of depth, because everybody's eyes has like freckles and things in them, and the glitter just adds a little something that I really like. Plus, the metallic flakes will bounce the light in your eye and make it look really nice. I don't know that these guys are all glittering there. Okay. So I will say I would leave these to, to dry about 10 minutes or so. You don't have to wait that long, but I would recommend it. Just to make sure that you're gonna get a really nice seal with your sealant. So your sealant can be anything. I've used even like clear craft glue. Um, but the stronger the sealant, the better it's going to be because it'll hold your glass eye on when you put it inside the clay. So just keep that in mind. Um, your sealant will also seal, so it'll seal your eye to the glass, but it'll also seal the paint job, which is what you want. Because if you use a glue that's not strong enough, it'll just pop right off the back of your eyes. But you can use anything that dries clear and it should look nice. There you go, there's your eye. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, let me know if there's anything I should change or add. Yep. Um, I will have the sealant that I use up on my Patreon. Um, just because it's a really odd one. It took me a bit to find one that I liked. <laughs> um, so I'm going to put that on my Patreon and I'm also going to be making 3D eyes. 3D follow me eyes. Um, and I'll be putting that on my Patreon as well today. I've been working on a Patreon for a good like two months now, 
but I didn't want to start advertising until I had enough content that I felt like you guys wouldn't be missing out on your first month if you paid to be part of it. So I'm starting to advertise now because I've officially got <laughs> got quite a bit of content up there now, so you guys can enjoy that. Um, just Pixie Peddler on Patreon. I'll include it in the bottom. But yep, so I'll include all my uh, all my all the stuff I used up there. Okay, thank you. Bye.